good Lord in prayer. The eternal and all wise God, we come before you first of all to say thank you, Lord. We come, Father God, because it was you, Lord, and nobody but you, Lord, who brought us all from the rocking of our cradle up to this present moment. It was you, Lord God, who brought us, Father God, through our hard times and our good times, Father God. Lord, it was you, Lord God, who brought us through, through tears in our eyes, Father God, to a, a smile on our face. It was nobody but you, Lord God. It was you, Lord God, who, who woke us up this morning and lied us in this morning on our way, Lord God. It was you, Lord God, who lied the blood and continued to run warm in our veins, Father. It was nobody but you, Lord God, who just keep bringing us, Lord God.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Thank God for that powerful prayer this morning. Pastor Montreal, thank you, Jesus. You know, sometimes we go through things in life, and I just had a testimony this morning that after hearing the testimony, I know what I've been through ain't nothing about what he or she been through. But I thank God for allowing me to come out today and just praise him one more time. He didn't have to do it, but he did it anyway. Someone saying this, you don't know what the Lord told me. Or you don't know what the Lord told me. Or you don't
How many know that if it had not been for God on our side, amen, we would not be here right now, but because of his faithfulness, because of his mercy and his grace, God has kept us again. So we give all praises to him, to the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Ghost. Bless God for it. Pastor Askew and deacons of our wonderful church, wonderful churches, amen, to the first ladies, amen, to the mothers of both churches, to this musical ensemble here, amen. Thank God for them offering up praise through song, amen. Amen. It's just good to be a back in the number one more time. And we are looking forward to hearing and seeing all that God is going to do in this year. But how many know that even in this short year, even in this brief time that we've been in 2021, that things have transpired that make us scratch our heads and wonder what what could be next. But I came with good news today to let you know that in the midst of all of the madness and confusion that we see all around us, God is still, he's still in control. I just wish I had a witness here to let you know that but it doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside. He's still in control. It doesn't matter what people are saying, no matter what they're doing, no matter what uprising or put down, God is still in control. So we thank God that nothing catches him by surprise. He knows everything. We give him all the praise because our life and our times are in the hand of the Lord. Amen. If you would, go with me swiftly to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4. Mark. Mark's gospel chapter 4. Verse number 24 and verse number 25. Mark chapter 4, verse 24 and verse number 25. There you'll find these words. Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear, more will be given. For whoever, whosoever has to him, more will be given. And to whoever does not have, even that what he has will be taken away from him. I want to talk briefly from the somatic thought. Be careful what you hear. Be careful what you hear. Watch what you hear. Be alert and tentative to what you hear. We're living in a critical time living in a time where right is being called wrong and wrong is being called right. Time where truth is being called a lie and lie now, lies are now being called the truth. It makes one wonder what in the world has this world come to that 
something that we thought we could depend on. Now those see them rejecting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't be surprised when men are led away with their itching ears because they want to hear what they want to hear. And many don't want to hear nothing from the. Don't be surprised that we're living in a time now where people want to do what's right in their own eyes. So, in the midst of this time that was foretold to us, in the midst of this season and this era in which we live, I hear the words of our text echoing through my spirit as Jesus told us to take care and be heed to heed what you hear. Make sure you don't allow just anything to be dropped or forced or poured into your spirit. I want you to know today that when we take heed, it is to pay attention to. It is to listen carefully, to be on guard, to watch over, that we are mindful of the news and the 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 the, the updates, the 411, whatever you call it, be careful what you allow people to drop in your spirit. Because there are people who know they are wrong. There's no question they are not misinformed. They are not misunderstanding. They know they are wrong. They know that they are not mistaken. They know that they are telling a purposeful lie. And they are telling the lie to those who will willingly obey. Willingly listen. And so Jesus in our text says, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you allow to come into your ear game. Can I tell you, some stuff sounds real juicy. Oh my God, some stuff, it, 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 it sounds really good and tantalizing to the ear, but Jesus still gives us a blanket warning. Be careful and take heed of what you hear. Why, 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 Pastor? Why is it so important? Why would he tell us to be careful what we hear? The first reason is what you hear affects your faith. You better hear me today. What you hear affects your faith. Now, what is faith? Can you see it? Can you put your hand on it? Can you sit down and talk to faith? If faith calls you, can you see it on your caller ID? No, but the word is right here, brother Oates, right in the text. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. We know that faith is important. I don't care what kind of job you have. I don't care what kind of position you have, what degree you earn and matriculated. It doesn't matter what name you go by. <laughs> Hebrews 11 and 6 says, know this, that without faith, it is impossible. I don't care who your mama is. I don't care who your daddy was. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, I know it flies in the face of those who say, I, but the truth is, it's not all good. Many of us want the victory, but we don't know how to tell if we got the victory or not. I wish I had a witness here. First John 5 and 4 says, to whoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. 
Israel. Over in ancient Israel. In the southern valleys called the Great Valley. There stood the Philistine army in fortified position. King Saul and the men of Israel on the other side. They were there in the valley of Elam, about 14 miles south of the modern day Jerusalem. Can't you hear them in this great valley as this giant named Goliath stands in the valley before them, beating his sword and his spear? Can't you see them out in this valley for 40 days? For the evening, he would come out and challenge them to send somebody. He would challenge them. He would intimidate them. He would call them into question. Is there not a man among you? Over and over again, he did this for 40 days. Look at them, hearing what this giant said. First Samuel. Chapter 17, verse 11, it says that when they heard what the giant said, the text says that these men were greatly despaired. In other words, they were shaking in their boots because of what they had heard. But the good news is, David shows up. And David didn't hear what all the rest of them heard. But I want you to know this today, beloved, that sometimes you get into trouble because you're too quick to listen to foolishness. You better, you better hear me now. You, 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 you get into trouble because you, you're quick to listen. And, and listen, when David shows up, David walks up as Goliath is now doing his daily routine of taunting the nation of Israel and David walks up and said who is this uncircumcised Philistine who is this that would dare to defile the armies of the living God David had not heard all of this other stuff that Goliath was saying and David came up and said what is he doing who is this man David understood that if God took care of me one time, even as a young boy, David understood if he did it one time, God is able to do it again. Sometimes, 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 beloved, we just need to understand who we are. We need to understand who we are in God. And Jesus said, take, take heed to what you hear. So, first thing to call what you hear, that's your faith. Now let's cut across the field and show you that watch. Not only do I need to take heed, but he says, watch. Be on God. Be attentive. He said, in other words, your ears play a greater role to your faith than what many believe. Because Many times, the enemy will try to mimic the plan or the principles of God. And he knows that if we don't get the word in us, then we'll be able to be devoured or disconnected from the promise of God. And so the enemy fights us. And he comes to intimidate us. He comes to challenge us so that we will not uh, be able to appropriate the gifts of God, the promises of God into our lives. You know, that's why it's dangerous when all you go by is what somebody told you. It's a dangerous thing. You, you gotta, you got to know what God said for yourself. And, and, and so and so the enemy comes, watch this, he comes because he understands that if I can keep junk in your ears, if I can keep you surrounded by foolishness, if I can keep you surrounded with people talking doubt and unbelief, if I can keep stuff around you that contradicts your faith, your faith will never mature in God. 
Proverbs 4 and 23 says, he says, keep diligence over your heart. In other words, watch over what goes in your heart because out of your heart flows the issues of life. That means that, listen, the important things in your heart and what's really in you, it, it, it comes out of your heart. And so we've got to guard ourselves as to what we hear. We've got to guard and take heed as to what we allow in our ear gate. Now, now, now watch this. It affects our faith. But understand this right here. I want y'all to get this. It's a systematic attack that we are facing. The enemy, I want y'all to get this. The devil can only be in one place at one time. You go with the other hear me. He, he, he is not omnipresent. And then he left. And what happened is, he didn't understand that the enemy saw him sowing seed. And then after he sowed his seed, the devil went behind him and threw some more seed in there. Y'all let this right here. He can only be in one place at one time. So what he does is, he begins to plant stuff around you. Y'all go on my different the text says that while the men slept, the enemy came in and sold some stuff around. And some of you right now are dealing with some stuff that was sown around you. The enemy planted. Time went on. They began to reveal themselves. And they began to show who they really were. Y'all better hear what I'm telling you. And, 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 and he said, he said, you got to be careful because the, the enemy has sown. So he said, be careful what you hear. Be careful what you allow into your ear gate. Be careful and guard yourself because the enemy wants to destroy.
And Goliath fell down, and David took Goliath's sword, his own sword, and cut his head off. Watch this, watch this, watch this. That was David as a young boy. That was David as a young boy. That was David as a young boy. But watch this. Somebody would say, that was just a fluke. That was just a one-off kind of thing. But listen, the problem with too many of us is that God bless us, but we don't know how to go back and duplicate what God did before. God has promised us that it's being occupied by somebody else. And you got to understand that just because they're sitting in the seat right now, does not mean that God is not going to turn the thing over and give it to who it belongs. So David, the same David that killed Goliath, later on now, because David watched what he heard, David God what he listened to. The text says that, watch this, he's not a king, and he comes to the Jebusite. site. Watch this, watch this, watch this. He comes to the city, and the city is up on a hill. It's fortified. And listen to these, these people, these Jebusites, inside the city. They begin to talk to David and say, there's no way in the world you're going to take this city even if we put the lame, crippled folks on the wall. This city is so strong you can't take it. Listen, 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 listen. The problem with the devil is that the devil sometimes over overestimates his own abilities. Sometimes the devil will get he'll get out in front of for God to be ready to do. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Watch this. Watch this. They, they, they talk all this stuff. And I'm trying to get to my closing here. They, they talk all this stuff to David. And, 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 and David, David, David said, David said, he heard all this stuff. You're not gonna come in here. You're not going to take this. I don't care what you've done in the past. I don't care what you've worked out in the past. We are so strong that you can't overtake us. We're so fortified that you can't break us down. But the Bible says in the same text, is that we look at where we are now and we forget that God does a deal in the now. Y'all want to give it? God speak to where, God speak to where he's taking you to. Not where you are right now. That's why God said you can be above only and never believe. You might be in the bottom of the bottom right now, but God said I'm going to speak to where I'm taking you. I 
I don't have. But two is to rub. But nevertheless, I'll make you the head and not the tail. Your friends and family may be treating you bad right now. But nevertheless, I'll raise you up in such a way that even they'll call you blessed. I'm talking about right now. You may be sick in your body, but nevertheless, by his stripes, I am healed. And then they came, and the Bible says, he said, Father, I suffer this cup to pass by me, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Then he led him out. Calvary's here. And what I love about Jesus is that all he did for God It was over. Just like some folk think <laughs> that it's over for you. But I came with good news for you. Don't count me out now. Don't count me out now. Give me just a little bit of time. All night, Friday night. <laughs>
I got all power. I got all power. Hey, but I don't need the power now. He said, I'm getting ready to leave you. Sister Lindsay, he said, I'm getting ready to leave. But I'm not going to take this power back to heaven with me. He said, but now I'm going to give you power. to the promise of God. And I'm telling you today, beloved, on this second Sunday in January 2021, I'm telling you right now, we've got to fight the good fight of faith. And the only way we're going to fight a good fight of faith is we've got to guard what's going in our ears. The enemy is on every side trying to discourage you, Trying to get you to throw in the towel, trying to say, get you to say that it's not worth it anymore. But I'm telling you, if you just hold on. Because you gotta have something to wrap. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. To wrap your faith around. And he said the only way you're gonna be able to do that is you got to be careful what you let come in your head. And, and, and can I tell you this? Some of y'all, it's not other people you need to stop listening to. Some of you need to stop listening to your own self. Because you telling yourself some crazy stuff. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes you just got to tell yourself, we're coming out of this.
Amen. Amen. Come on, good God, pray, God. Come on, good God, pray. Come on, give me pray. I can have everything God said I can have. I can do everything that God said I can do. I just got to trust what God said in his word. I'm not waiting on. Waiting on. Morning star. If I mess around and get in trouble, somebody said he'll be a lawyer in the courtroom. Hallelujah. He's my butcher and my baker. He put clothes on my back. He's my mother and he's my father. And I found out. But sometimes when I got to walk by myself, that he's a friend that'll stick closer than any brother will. Lord, I forsake you. I'll be with you always. Even to the end of the world. I'll never leave you. I'll walk with you and I'll talk with you. I'll let you know that you belong to me. But you got to take heed what it says. Lean on me. Trust God. God's going to do exactly exactly what he said. While we're here today, we don't want to assume that everybody's in the ark of safety. We don't want to assume that everybody knows him with the power of his resurrection. If you're here right now, Pastor, I want to, I want to be saved. I want to give my life to Christ. Let me tell you, the devil will never tell you to get yourself together. The devil will never tell you you need to turn around. Pastor, how do I know God is talking to me? Because he's telling you things that you really don't want to hear. He said, the day you give a warning, don't harden your heart. He said, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking, I'm knocking, I'm, I'm asking you, let me in, let me in. There was one today that would say, Pastor, I'm going to be saved. Just turn your heart to song. We'll pray with you, we'll pray for you. Please send an invitation to Christ to you now when you come. Is that one that was seen yesterday? Father. Father.
Amen. If that's you that turned to have this on, we'll pray with you. We'll pray for you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. My next appeal is, if you're here right now and you're saved, but you say, Pastor, I don't have a church home. I want to, I want to become a part of what God is doing here in Green Grove and friendship. We invite you to come. The door of the church is now open. Is that one of them say yes? Just turn your hand to song. We'll pray for you. We made three appeals. One for salvation. One for rededication. And one for membership into the body. Is that one ever say yes? My last appeal is Has anyone here this I have a prayer? God, pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. I see a light. Pray for me. I see you. I see you, brothers in the back. I see you. Pray for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray, pray. Glory to God. Lord, I need prayer. Amen. Amen. 